Okay, here we're gonna look at a solution to problem B2 from the 2018 Putnam exam. So it reads as follows. So we wanna let N be a natural number and define the following complex polynomial. So we have Z to the N minus one plus two Z to the N minus two plus three Z to the N minus three all the way down to N minus one times Z plus N. So I've given some examples here to get a feel for what this looks like. So F3 of Z is Z squared plus two Z plus three. F4 of Z is Z cubed plus two Z squared plus three Z plus four. Okay, good. So now our goal is to show that Fn has no roots in the closed unit disk. In other words, the set of all complex numbers z where the modulus of z is less than or equal to one. Okay, so this is actually a pretty quick solution once you see the trick. So I wanna motivate the trick a little bit. So we want to multiply this polynomial FNZ by some other polynomial that has um, the following result. It makes that resulting polynomial simpler to work with and it can be shown to have no roots on that unit disk D. In other words, that resulting polynomial um, can be shown to have no roots on that uh, disk D, or maybe the only roots that it has on D are um, obviously not roots of Fn. Okay, so as we look for a polynomial to multiply Fn by that makes it simpler, what we can notice is that the coefficients of the powers of z increase as we go um, from larger exponents of z to smaller exponents of z. So if we were to able to somehow subtract three from two, we would end up with one. Four from three, we would end up with one. Again, three th from two, we would end up with one. And so maybe we can somehow construct a polynomial that would allow us to do that. And in fact, we can, and that polynomial is uh, the polynomial z minus 1. So now let's notice that if we multiply z minus 1 by f4z, that's go going to be z minus 1 times z cubed plus 2z squared plus 3z plus 4. But now uh, we can distribute that out, and notice that's going to give us z to the fourth plus 2z cubed plus 3z squared plus 4z minus our original polynomial from multiplying that minus 1 through. So we've got z cubed plus 2z squared plus 3z plus 4. But now notice a lot of this stuff simplifies and that's going to leave us with z to the fourth plus, so 2z cubed minus z cubed is z cubed, 3z squared minus 2z squared is z squared, and so on and so forth. And then finally we have minus 4 in the end. So, um, this really gives us a good idea for what our trick should be. I'll clean up the board and then we'll start off with that trick. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the solution. So um, as I noticed before, we're going to multiply Fn of z by some polynomial that has a simplifying effect. We look at a special example of that just now, and we're gonna call this new polynomial Gn of z. So we're gonna take this to be z minus one times Fn of z. Okay, good. But now notice that is going to be the following. So that's going to be Zn plus Zn minus one plus all the way down to Z squared plus Z minus N. So that's actually pretty easy to check and it's fairly obvious from this example that we did before. So I'll let you guys work out all the details for this pretty simple calculation. Now the next thing we want to do is look at the modulus of Gn of z and if we can get a handle on what its modulus is, show that that's never zero. Well, unless z equals one, which we'll talk about that later, then if the modulus is never zero, then uh, it would have no roots in the space that we're looking for. Okay, so now let's look at Gn of z like this. So notice that's going to be the modulus of Zn plus Zn minus 1 all the way down to Z squared plus Z minus N. So I've put the, this first bunch of terms in parentheses because I want to use something called the reverse triangle inequality. And so let's recall this reverse 
triangle inequality just for a second. So it says that the absolute value or the modulus if you're dealing with complex numbers of x minus y is bigger than or equal to the modulus of the modulus of x minus the modulus of y. Okay, so that's the reverse triangle inequality. So you can prove it pretty easily from the triangle inequality. Okay, so we want to apply that to this term right here where we take this big chunk in the beginning to be x and this to be y. Okay, so that's going to give us that this is bigger than or equal to the modulus of zn plus zn minus 1 all the way down to n minus uh, the size of n, but notice the size of n is just n itself given that that's a positive integer. Okay, so but now notice that this is always bigger than or equal to zero. So that's obvious because we're taking a modulus here and that always gives you something that's bigger than or equal to zero. And now notice that uh, we really want to look at when is this equal to zero because that's the only place that, that this could go wrong. If this is always bigger than zero, then we're good to go because we have gn of z is bigger than or bigger than zero, which means that fn, its modulus would be bigger than zero. So we're really, really we want to look at this question is when is this equal to zero? And it's equal to zero exactly when zn plus zn minus 1 all the way down to z squared plus z, the modulus of that equals n. And the only solution for this for the values of z that we are interested in, in other words, the modulus of z is less than or equal to 1, is z equals 1. Great. So what that tells us is that the only root of gn of z on d is the root z equals 1, but this is not a root of fn of z. And that's actually pretty easy to check that that's not a root of fn of z. You can just plug 1 into this and notice you get the sum 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, which is obviously not 0. So what we've shown is that this... Okay, so let's reiterate what we have here. This polynomial gn and fn share all of the same roots except z equals 1. And what we've shown is that the only root of gn on d is z equals 1, but that can't be a root of fn, which means fn has no roots on this disk d. Okay, good. This is the end of the video.